evening. It is August 9th, 2016. My name is Jacob. And I'm Danielle. And this is the Proteus Podcast. Ideas in all shapes and forms. How are you doing, Jake? I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well? That's Well, that's pretty good for doing pretty well. Yes, it is. I've devoted my entire day to sleeping in, eating lunch, and reading a book. So, that's good. Last week, you were doing a super secret project. Yes, I did a super secret project. What was it? I redid the grout in my parents' bathtub. (laughs) What? Yes, I took all the old grody grout off, replaced all the broken damaged grout, cleaned the tiles immaculately... It was an undertaking. I put probably 10 hours of work into that project. Huh. And uh, your parents, they did not know you were doing this, I'm no, guessing? They were appropriately astonished. What is appropriately astonished for Shorty? About like normal, to be honest. <laughs> so, so he smiled at you? Yeah, that sounds, <laughs> yep, that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, that's 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 interesting yeah. and your mom who had just returned from china i think she was a little too jet lagged to do, be overly astonished but i did get a hug out of the deal oh good mom hugs are pretty great generally speaking generally speaking they there, are there are the a couple mom hugs that you don't really want I had other people's moms like it's other, weird sometimes yeah if you don't really you don't really know them that well it's or like don't your, really see them your, your friend's mother hugs you and you've never met her before you're like ah um and you know you have to look at your friend and be like is this okay is this a thing <laughs> this okay? that your because family like, does because i'm weirded out right now <laughs> <laughs> because like I, I find most moms not all moms when they give you a hug they're hugging you like you're their child mm-hmm So it's like this encompassing hug, which on one level feels nice, but if you don't even really know their name, yeah, you're like, you're like, ah, yeah, yeah, that can get awkward really quick. I've really found it actually more difficult when I thought that a friend's mom was hot. I was just going to say that it gets even worse when they're very attractive and you have to pretend they're not because they're they're your friend's mom. You're like, oh, gee, Miss. Smith. <laughs> Can't act um, like I'm enjoying this at all. Oh, this yeah, is the it, worst. So yeah, mom, mom, mom hugs. As long as it's your mom, they're cool. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> have you um? I I have a couple things I I want to talk about. Um, the and and this one will lead into the primary thing I want to talk about. Okay. Okay. Have you been watching Keeping Up with the Olympics? Not at all. In fact, I'm avoiding Keeping Up with the Olympics for the most part. Oh, why is that? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, well, my God. In my own small little way, I'm boycotting the Olympics because it's in Rio. Okay, just because. Okay, so there's so many reasons why you could why you would be unhappy with that. Well, I. Uh, Based on all the news reports and things leading up to the Olympics, I think that the Olympic Committee needs to set, like, a minimum standard of living for a city before it can be awarded the Olympics, because all this gaudy bullshit's going on, and there's people that, you know, live in tin huts, and, you know, and they don't have basic sanitation. Oh, yeah, sanitation really bad. You know. It's no, no, just, that's. I don't think it's appropriate to valid. do that, you know. So, so how far in advance does a city get awarded the Olympics? It's pretty far. I can't remember exactly how far in advance, but it's a pretty good time ways because there's so much you have to build to host the Olympics. I mean, it's not right. like you can just oh, we're just going to have it down the street at the park. It's this unless unless monumental they've had it there before. And, I mean, you know, they start talking about how shit's not done a year before the Olympics. You know, Sochi had the same problem. They're like, where are they going to get snow for the Winter Olympics at Sochi? And, you wow. Know, all these Sochi things. had other issues. And, you know, but they're coming up with the same things. Like, the teams are getting there, and they're, 
the places where they're supposed to stay aren't finished, you know? It's just an empty plumbing stub where the toilet's supposed to be, and, you know, the, these rooms are literally unfinished. They didn't finish building these things. And they're, so clearly they're not allotting enough time to do it. But I've read several times that getting hosting the Olympics is a death sentence for your local economy because you're going to spend millions on these facilities that will never be used again. But is that completely true? I mean... Uh, I mean, you get instance, this one big jolt of, you know, building things and it stimulates the economy a little bit. But then you end up with, you know, an Olympic stadium that gets used, you know, once or twice for odd, for, you know, motorcycle rallies or something. It's not like you're going to be hosting Olympic level events there. What are you going to do with three Olympic swimming pools? Well, what if you already have three Olympic swimming pools? Yeah, but most places build all this stuff from scratch, you know, and it's... It's tough on places with good economies. Like there's, I remember reading a lot about the Sydney Olympics and the, all the nice facilities they built for that, and they're just falling apart and going to ruin. And people kind of complain that it happened there afterwards because of what it did to their economy. Hmm. You know, and Sydney is one would hope a city that's not struggling with shit like basic sanitation. So to do did... it in, you know, there where this is something that isn't barely guar isn't guaranteed to all of its citizens, let alone starting to be worked on, is ridiculous. That doesn't sound so... Okay, I think the Olympics will still be going on next week, right? I don't remember. I don't know. I'm not keeping up with it at all. But how long do the Olympics last? It's a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, I think it's more than one week. Let's, let's do some homework and let's come back and let's have a, have a discussion about how the Olympics fails yeah. or succeeds. I mean, my primary point is I feel like it's irresponsible to spend money on an Olympic village like of that scale, and we know there are millions and millions of dollars worth of facilities when your city is struggling with basic sanitation. Well, no, I don't disagree there. I don't yeah. disagree there at all. Um, I mean, Rio, Brazil, has a lot of issues. Um, and yeah, but yeah. anyway, we'll come back to it. Put a pin in that topic for next I, week. Yeah, next week, everybody. I have to learn about the Olympics now against my will. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, segue, summer Olympics. Summer. It's the summer. Thankfully, my power came back on. Because of summer thunderstorms. Summer thunderstorms. Like it went out, and I looked outside, and I'm like, "This is ridiculous. It's barely cloudy," and yet. <laughs> Somewhere. S lightning storm turning my electricity off. Man, that lightning. It's the worst. It's been all day. It's been doing this thunder and then rain for five minutes and thunder. And so there's a chance that you may get cut off. So, yeah, there's a chance. Man, thanks, it seems thanks to be okay right the, now, though. It's eased up. For the up. warning. Yeah. Anyway, the summer. Summer thunderstorms and all. I don't like the summer. You don't like summer. I don't. Uh, I I feel that fall is a far superior season. When's your what month are you born in? Uh, February. February. Hmm. Huh. Well, February and fall are practically cousins. See, I have this ongoing theory that people have an affinity for the weather they were born to. Oh well, I do love the rain. But I it's, also it's like an it ongoing when it's theory. Cold. I've, there's no possible way to prove this because well. There's probably no real. What you need? It'd be a vast and ridiculous study that no one would fund. But actually, actually you know I, what you could do? You could, you could put up a survey online and then just start dropping it in all kinds of forums. Yeah, that would require me to actually do something and interact with people. Okay. Well, you know. So, but yeah, getting back to it, I, I'm kind of done with the expectation that I should, as an adult, think the summer is amazing and that the summer is awesome. And summer, that the summer was amazing should be my when I didn't have month. to do anything during the summer when I was a kid. Exactly. That is when summer is great, is when you are a kid. But when you're an adult, I think it's all right to like take summer, put it up on a shelf and go, thanks, summer, you've given me good times. But now I'm going to really look forward to this season because 
there's things that happen this season that I like. Uh, I like the weather. Um, I don't have S- Steve Buscemi outside of my house screaming at me during the season. Steve it, Buscemi it's... screams outside your house during the summer? <laughs> oh, yeah, all the time. Would you get his autograph for me? No, I, I refuse to. Please? He's too weird. I'll give you something nice if you do. <laughs> uh, I'll get you a imprint of his face. Okay, that's probably even better. I can make a really hilarious case mod out of that. <laughs> yeah, but what do you think about that? The expectation? Because I find it still prevalent that people look forward to the summer. And it's like, come on, you're in an adult job now. Why are you restricted to the summer? Well, here's what it is. This is the, the classic recapturing misspent youth, maybe. Recapturing properly spent youth, probably. And also the mythos of summer. All right? Let me tell you what the mythos of summer is. The mythos of summer is that cool summer afternoon where it's nice out and it's nice in the shade and a little warm in the sun and you're in the backyard and you got some burgers and dogs grilling on your Weber grill and, you know, the kids are over here playing soccer with a ball and having a squirt gun fight and you're there with a nice frosty beverage wearing your everyone kiss the cook apron and the you know beautiful blue sky with some big fluffy clouds and you've got your manicured backyard mythos of summer like that's we've created this image everyone has in their head and that's what summer's supposed to be is about hanging out with your friends being outside doing your stuff and so everyone purports to like summer for those things and they're like, oh, I'm going to do all this stuff. And, you know, they have the giant sales at the stores. And you buy a new barbecue this year, grill outside with your friends. And you spend $380 on a brand new gas grill. And it sits on your front back lawn and rusts over the next six years because you used it twice. Mm-hmm. Because no one actually has time for any of this shit. Or, or if you do, you do have, like... like Okay, I live in an apartment, I have a little bit of patio, and I have my Weber gas grill. But I use it all seasons. Yeah, but there's like, this little I don't... mythos built up around summer that, you know, and red checked tablecloths on picnic tables and all that stuff. It's like we built this whole image of summer up that these are the things you need to do, and they're fun, and you remember doing them when you were a kid and having fun, and potato salad and, and watermelon. You don't like watermelon, but that's a different story. You know... Just all the little summer things that we've built this, you know. It's like, the, it's the white picket fence dream, to be, per, you know, to boil it right down. It's just an extension of that. It's the things you're supposed to do in summer. And some of them are fun. You know, and going to the beach and water skiing and flying kites and surfing and blah, 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 blah. All of these things can be and often generally are fun. So who do we, okay, so... I agree. But we've those condensed things, all those activities I into feel. this is what you do in the summer. But why can't you do those things in the fall or the spring or some of them even in the winter? You perfectly well can. But I think we have a frustration with as people that don't like summer is the in this mythos, again, of condensing it all into summer. And these are the activities that if you don't go do them in the summer, you're just lame. Or so who can something. we blame for this? Um, Someone corporate is America. Corporate America. Yeah, uh, I it's think it's really I, the commercialization of things because you know they, you watch commercials for everything. Well, we used yeah. to watch commercials, and now we do everything we can to avoid them, include spending extra money to not watch commercials. True, but but you know the, every product is, and especially advertised this time, starting in mid-April or earlier. It's get ready for summer. All this fun stuff's gonna happen. You got to buy all these things, and they. And they market it on that, you know, mythos of how great summer is. And you're going to go to the beach and you're going to wear your new board shorts and you're going to go surfing and you're going to need a new hat and a big umbrella and a big beach towel and some floaty wings. And you kind of come in and buy all this stuff. <laughs> and they, you know, it's, they've been marketing it on all the fun you're going to have because it's summer. I agree. And it all harkens back to all the fun you had when you got out of school and had three whole months free, which they don't even give anymore. It's like a month and a half. To kids, you got out uh-huh. of school, and that was the best time of year. You didn't have to get up early. You didn't have to do any homework. You didn't have to answer any questions. You went outside and played until your mother came in and yelled at you to come in out from under the streetlights because it was finally dark outside. And you're back, you know, when people didn't care where their kids were until it was dark. 
you know, there's so, this whole. I I agree with you. So it's a beautiful you. marketing scheme because you're that, trying to resit to sell people's <laughs> youth back to them. See, I, and I agree with you that corporate America is responsible for the now. But where did they get the idea? I don't know. Probably in some boardroom somewhere. That someone said, "You know what it was really great it was when I didn't have to go to school and got to play all summer." You know, I, I play all summer. That's it. What about Norman Rockwell? Yeah, it's the Norman Rockwell dream. I don't blame him because he was just a painter. Well, but... he was a painter that like he made so many of these things that you're talking about iconic. Yeah. Like when I think of like a checkered tablecloth on a picnic table, there's a Norman Rockwell print that comes up in my mind. More than likely, yeah. So he's partially responsible. But, you know, a huge part of it is this mythos of the American dream that I don't know ever really existed. Like people talk about things, you know, maybe it was in the 50s when, you know, it was the white picket fences and everyone rode their bikes around like they did in Stand By Me and all these things. You know, there's this weird image we have of a time in America where everything was just great. Mm-hmm. You know, where you went home and your mom gave you a sandwich and a big glass of milk that the milkman had delivered and he wore his crisp, fancy white uniform and all this stuff. You know, you see it in the retro style or period-ish pieces and just in, like, almost in a tongue-in-cheek way in a lot of flashbacky type things in, in movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm not convinced it, it ever seem... existed quite in that pure of a way, but that's probably what it is the white american dream of all these things being just the right and you know the kid in the blue jeans and the red and white striped shirt going the fishing I, I like the all, idea it's norman, of the like great... you said it's norman rockwell it's all these iconic images you see and mm -hmm. people have this feeling that that was what it was and we're trying to constantly recapture that whether it was ever real or not see i don't think it ever really was i think uh, like i think you hit upon something when you're like the 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 white American dream because that's exactly what it was. It was the great white American dream during the fifties. And we very um, nearly caught it and then we burned it all down. Well, in, in, in my opinion, that's a good problems. thing. But I mean, to a certain even extent, the... if we could have, you know, recaptured that <laughs> it's, it's what they're showing the people in the, uh, in fallout three in the Mesmertron thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything's nice. But everything's also white. I mean, that's part of the problem with that image. Yeah, it was very whitewashed. I mean, but it's a, clearly it was a different time. And well, you, a different time doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't I mean, mean it was right, had, but that was, you know, the way people felt then, at right. least some of them. So, so if we incorporate that into this discussion, and we're like, well, that image wasn't necessarily correct, right? The yeah. great American dream or the great white American dream, like, didn't include all the other cultures that were in America, yeah. are in America. It tr and to a certain extent it did. Like, it, it tried to portray, oh, these people can be just like us and do all the same things. Yes, and be they're happy. made in your house. And not even always that, though. But I don't want to get this into a nightmarish discussion of race relations. Back to the summer thing. <laughs> Again, I think that there was this image, and I think it was actually pushed during the 50s, of a time in between the futurist settings that they, you know, the, the swoopy rockets and science fiction, the future that people imagined with nuclear-powered everything, and what was happening then, and there's this idealized set version of America that they foresaw that happened in between here and there, and probably never existed, but... S s and this was the time, you know, Mad Men, more or less, when marketing really was coming into its own and mm -hmm. becoming a real force because you could reach so many people through television and, you know, magazines were being distributed nationally and things like that. And it made it possible to create an entire mythos of what America was supposed to be and what to summer create an image. within that was supposed to be. You know, and Norman Rockwell probably wrote very much was in the middle of that, writing the coattails of the advertisers and painting all these iconic scenes, most of which probably existed for split seconds. You know, all the men mm -hmm. playing cards in a 
hardware store and the kid walking down the street with his fishing pole and all that certainly he probably saw all those things but you know it was a split second in one place out of an entire country but an extremely marketable place very marketable you know because he was selling people you know the market he was selling to was probably very largely you know people coming back from the war that you know are on gi bill and finally can afford a you know a car and a little house and stuff and they they were they were right there at the beginning of the american dream and you show them these iconic scenes of what they want it to be and you know it makes it very marketable <sighs> this makes me hate summer more yeah it's it, the weather is terrible for it i mean it's, it's... i the last thing I want to do in all of my incredible pasty whiteness is go to the pool and get a hellacious sunburn. <laughs> right. You know, we, I'll go when outside do you like to go when to it's the pool? nicer out. Yeah. Well, what, what's the ideal pool swimming weather for you? What's the ideal pool swimming season for you? Well, because where I'm from, we had to wait a good part of the day for get to get to 80 degrees and therefore be warm enough that mom would allow us to go swimming. That was the baseline. If they're above 80, we're allowed to go swimming. So 80, that's it. Any warmer than that, and it doesn't seem right. It's, and cooler than that, and I mean, I'll swim now because I'm an adult and I can make my own stupid decisions. <laughs> so, uh, you know, here, the summer fluctuates. The average temperature stays in the m- mid-60s to the low 70s, mm. Typically, and then we have a couple stretches where we'll get in the 80s and maybe we'll break 90. <sighs> I know, it sounds nice, doesn't it? I'm so jealous right now. I have no <laughs> idea. But still, it gets too hot. Where are like my 80? green tinted glasses? Where are my green tinted glasses? They're right here, sitting on my desk. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It's like. Uh, I I just feel like there's so many things that are like shoehorned into what summer is shoehorned into like this image, this mythos of, of these, this is a summer activity that we, we don't really appreciate how good they are or how fantastic they can be in a different season. Yeah. And at the same time, it's being all shoehorned into summer and with the limited free time pool any individual has in America anymore, it seems right. Like, you know, because if you look at the statistics, we work more hours than most other countries and have less time off. And, you know, there's no way to get all those things done. You know, sure, you can do some of it after work and on the weekends, but so many people now are working two jobs that that becomes even more of a technical impossibility. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, just organizing our friends to get together is a ordeal. Yeah, it's a, you start planning this six months in advance, and still people don't show up because they, something, they can't make it. So we need to become, as a society, less seasonally biased. Yeah, it's like, you know, here we're, we're almost to a pumpkin spice everything season, so we got that to look forward to. Oh, God. Ugh. Can you imagine what it would be like if you could get pumpkin and um, pumpkin spice flavored everything all year and the peppermint flavored everything all year? Then it wouldn't be a big deal anymore. And it would stop being a ridiculous big deal that everyone has to mock. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I like that. And that everyone has to mock. Because it's really that now with pumpkin spice. I am not. I mean, last year really showed everyone was tired of this. And started making fun of it to a huge degree. Like I saw a picture of a tire shop that said pumpkin spice tires. Just kidding. Get in here. <laughs> I think I think um, that should be the title of the podcast today. A big deal that everyone has to mock. Nah, I think it's already got a title. What is it? <laughs> Where's my green tinted glasses? Where's my green? T- I don't know. They're both good. A big deal to mock. Maybe. We'll put a pin <sighs> in those. <laughs> But I, I'm looking forward to the fall. Um, there's a lot going on in the fall that I'm really looking forward to. I mean, it's it just seems that in the fall, people are typically less busy because they aren't trying to cram everything into summer. And, like, the, the mentality that people have 
Is it just a little bit more laid back? I don't get that from fall. Because fall, when, is at least a little with the people I know, everyone's ramping up and trying to get the last few things done before summer ends. And then it's this giant whirlwind of fiascos f- going downwards through Halloween and all of that bull roar, which somehow has become a month-long event for some people. Then spirals into the new Thanksgiving, which is yet another giant thing. All these school activities spirals through Christmas, and everyone hits hits bottom in the first of January, going, "Why did I do all of that?" <laughs> I, I think so we, you may be talking about a, your own experiences. Well, it's there. not just the well, because of the industry I work in. I'm seeing that, and just in all my, the people I know, with if oh, I've already talking about making plans to do something and it's oh we've already got this thing planned because we got thanksgiving and the thing right before that and this that and the other thing and all this stuff leading up to it and we really it's because we've become this activity and event centered culture where like you have to be doing something all the time and you know if you're not doing something you need to be getting ready to do something yeah I'm with you. I do love fall, though. It's my favorite month as well. Favorite month? Well, time of year. Season. Mm, season. Time of year. Season. <laughs> Each month is its own season. In its, you know that in time when the leaves fall? What? They turn colors and they fall. That time of year? Yeah. That one. That one's nice. Mm-hmm. The weather gets good then. Uh, on, a, on a... So I'm, I'm going to start to close this out here with a little bit of a thought about how much my life is about to disappear into my computer. Okay. Do you know what comes out in, let me see here, three days? Uh, no. No Man's Sky. Oh, wait, that doesn't come out on PC right away, does it? Ah, it's released for everyone on the 12th. Oh, it's already out on the PlayStation, right? Uh, they no, they pushed everything back so they could do a global release all at the same time. Uh, I'm sure that made someone mad, but it's more, huh. it's more fair of them. Yeah, doing a platform exclusive release in this day and age is kind of a jerk move. Mm-hmm. At least when it's supposed to be so cross, cross platform. And I really wish I had the foresight to have acquired a machine that could play that. And it... will it not run on your laptop? Uh, it's Windows only. Really? Really. Who does wow. that? I, you'd think at this point with how many millions of iPhones sold and Apple products being, you know, somewhat at the forefront of, technol- of technology, people would just say, fine, we'll develop for both. And mm-hmm. yet, they're still not doing it. Nope, too busy developing for PlayStation 4. Yeah. But anyway, that's what I'm. That's where my life is going to be going into. Well, that's exciting. Take screenshots. I'll tell, I'll tell you all about it when mm. I discover a planet. Awesome. So tell me, now that we've talked about the Olympics, how summer sucks and shouldn't have so much weight put upon it. That's a better way of putting it. Summer doesn't suck. There's just too much expectation placed on it. Yeah, that's that? really what sucks about summer is the vast expectations. Yeah. That everyone has. You know, and they ask, oh, what did you do this summer? I worked. <laughs> <laughs> the false the false expectations of summer. Yeah. So we talked about that, and I bragged to you about No Man's Sky. That's just not even fair. How unkind of you. So bragged. How jaded are you? Today? Yeah. Ah, I'm like a seven. A seven? Yeah. Wow. You said that you were doing pretty good at the beginning of the podcast. I am doing pretty good, but I can be good and jaded at the same time. I'm a multi-skilled <laughs> man. Um, I'm on the cusp of the abyss of sucktitude. Oh, the fulcrum. <laughs> I'm right at the there. fulcrum. So what are you, a five or a four? I'm at a five. Five. Just a delicate balancing act. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything at any moment could just tip me over. Ah, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. Well, that's good, I guess. It's not bad, yeah. but it's also not great. It gives you the great. opportunity to, re, you know, retreat from the fulcrum or abyss or whatever we named it. I really need to go back and check on that. 
You really should. And because... write it down. <laughs> <laughs> write it down. And then we can make t-shirts. I mean, you know how many hours of podcast we have now? A good number? It's like I mean, a half-day project times. to go back and listen to all of them. Woo! You can see where we really suck and then go, ah. Uh, I do that with <laughs> almost everything. <laughs> uh, do you have a quote? I do. And it's vaguely related to seasons. This is from Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I've always loved this line. The dew has clearly fallen with a particularly sickening thud this morning. Cute. I like it. Uh, Yeah, it's just like, what a vivid and yet completely confusing word picture. This is by Howard Graham Buffett. Each of us has about 40 chances to accomplish our goals in life. I learned this first through agriculture because all farmers can expect to have about 40 growing seasons, giving them just 40 chances to improve on every harvest. Hmm. I can't decide if that's vastly inspiring or horrifically depressing. (laughs) <laughs> this possibly depends entirely on where you are on the fulcrum. Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> wow. I think I need to go <laughs> into my room and think about everything I've done. <laughs> uh, there you go, everybody. Go put oh, that thousand it... yard stare to use. Oh, big thing as we go into send us emails and follow us on the Twitters. Thank you for today's seasonal conversation from listener D. Bukowski. Ooh, we had an email? That's right. No, I had a message. Ooh. They found me through the Google. Ah, how stealthy and yeah, slightly creepy. Yeah, on the Google, on the Google's Hangouts. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. Keep sending us your suggestions and we'll keep using them until there's too many to, and then we'll start ignoring them. And then we'll start ignoring them, except for the ones that we really like. Yes. And at this pace, this should be in about 30 years. So don't feel disheartened. Yeah, keep it up. We're always here for you. Until we aren't. (laughs) Until we aren't. In which case. So, follow us on Twitter so that you can get updates when new podcasts are posted. Or on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, um the tuner and all we're on many places we are even on youtube if you for we're, some reason can't load anything else and want to watch a high definition square of our logo while you listen to our dulcet voices well yours is dulcet maybe maybe we should have an entire podcast on the meaning of the word dulcet oh, i like that. that that would be obnoxious sounds like the sort of thing <laughs> we do Anyways, I've been Jacob. And I'm still Danielle. Have a lovely evening.